Hey guys, it's Andrea from the vlog Pine and Prospect Home, and I was about to start this video by saying I'm so excited. <laughs> I think I start every video with I'm so excited. <laughs> So I need to come up with something new to start my videos with. Honestly though, I really do get so excited to share our DIY projects with you guys. You know, it's one thing sending pictures to my mom and, <laughs> and having her tell me, you know, how, what a great job we did or how beautiful something is. She's kind of my go-to person, my best friend that I share these things with. Um, but it's a whole other thing when you've got this entire community of people who have chosen to subscribe to your channel and you know watch whatever it is that you come up with so you guys really mean so much to me thank you i get so excited truly every time i upload a new video today is the day our 100 year old barn beam mantle is all finished on our fireplace and i am so in love with the way that it turned out. This was actually a much simpler project than we thought it was going to be, actually. Uh, my husband took the old mantle off, the one that we built. So we built that mantle that we had before around the original mantle that was here when we moved in. And we created these little boxes for, you know, the cable box and um, our DVD player. And that was the one thing that we sort of had to decide because if we were gonna do this barn beam as a mantle, we knew we wouldn't be able to have a cable box anymore and we were so torn as to whether or not we should just upgrade to a smart TV and stop paying for cable um, or if we should you know, continue with the cable box. And we, we really talked it over and decided, to, my husband and I maybe watch one or two shows. Um, we just, we usually do a lot of reading at night, so we decided, you know what, we're paying a lot of money every month for cable, why don't we just stop paying for it and upgrade to a smart TV and within a couple months the TV should pay for itself because we're not paying that cable bill anymore. So um, we'll see how it goes. We took that old mantle off that, we, that my husband had built and it came off really easily. Um, even the original mantle that was here when we moved in came off really easily. And um, actually, this is something that my husband, he gets frustrated with me and I completely understand. He's not used to this whole blogging thing, YouTube thing, video thing yet. And to be honest, I'm not either. Sometimes I'll be doing a project and then I'll look back and think, oh shoot, why didn't I record that? I should have had that on video. And I've even had a couple comments from you guys saying, we want to see more of the process, show more of the process. and. When you've got three little boys running around and you're trying to squeeze in projects and get things done, sometimes the last thing on my mind is to pull my camera equipment out, but it's becoming more of a routine. I'm trying to be better about it. In this case, <laughs> I got a lot of it on camera, but unfortunately I was outside with the boys. We were doing something out there and my husband said he was going to come and take some measurements. And before I knew it, he was outside and he said, you want to go look at your mantle? <laughs> I was like, Mike, I wanted to record you installing the mantle. So if you're interested, I did share some of the process over on my Instagram feed. and in my stories, I have a highlight called Fireplace, I believe. And if you go there, you can see what the wall looked like where he took the mantle off. And in that gap there is where he installed a 2x4. And then he attached this beam to the 2x4 that was anchored into the wall. So anyways, I hope that makes sense to you guys. And I will write all of this out in the blog post. I asked my husband exactly what he did. So if you have questions, you can head to the post to read all the details. But thankfully, most of this beam is supported by the fireplace underneath. We didn't have to go crazy really anchoring it to the wall. Even though we did anchor it to the wall, we didn't have to go overboard with steel rods or anything like that because a lot of the weight is being supported by our fireplace, thankfully. So anyways, I just love the way that this turned out. We did sand the beam down with really fine, I want to say 120 grit sandpaper. Um, just to clean it up a little bit, help to get rid of some of the splinters on there um, so that the beam is nice and soft to the touch now. And it did lighten it up a little bit, but it's still pretty dark. And I asked you guys on Instagram 
if you thought it was too dark or if you liked the color and it was this crazy like 98% of you said you loved the color as is. So I decided to leave it. I think it's something I just have to get used to because it was white before. So um, it's just it's a lot different for me seeing the dark mantle but I am starting to really love it and it's really growing on me. If you noticed over on the far end of the beam we ended up keeping that piece that sticks out. I believe a couple of you guys told me in the comments on my video where I originally shared this beam, it was my antique haul video, um, I believe you guys said it was a tenon. Am I saying that correctly? Maybe I'm completely wrong. Um, but I kept that. It was just too cool. I had to leave it on there. And it ended up working out to where that, um, so if we had flipped this around, the other side was sort of damaged and if you notice the beam actually has these natural slopes to it underneath and i wanted those to go on the bottom of the beam it just it looks so beautiful sort of sloping upwards and that piece that comes off of the end of the mantle um happened to end up on that side so originally i would have had it on this side um but looking back it's probably best that it is over there because this is a bench seat and I wouldn't have wanted anyone hitting their head on it or anything like that. And I actually love where it ended up. I think it's so beautiful down there and it just adds so much character to the fireplace. In order to fit the beam onto the fireplace, whenever I installed the airstone over top of my brick, um, this airstone, I didn't worry about the top of it being level or anything like that because it was going to be hidden by some cove molding. Well, once we took that molding off, we had to do some work and level out the stone a little bit, and that was sort of a messy job. Once all of that stone was all leveled out on top and the beam was in place, there was a very small gap there, and I just filled that gap using some joint compound. It's the same stuff that I used to actually give my fireplace a German schmear look, and I have a tutorial on that as well. If you're interested in checking it out, I'll put the link in the description below. But I just use that almost as like my caulk to fill the gap. But I love the way that that turned out, and I think the transition is really nice now between the stone and the beam. Once the beam was in place, I did feel like my bench seat and the top of the shelves near the fireplace were a little bit lighter in color than the beam itself, so I did some work and I played around with some stain. I added some early American to try to darken both the bench top and the shelf. So I didn't end up matching the beam exactly, but there are so many color variations in the beam that it's hard to match something like this. You've got a lot of darker tones and a lot of lighter tones. So I would say that the bench top and, and the shelf top sort of lean more towards the lighter tones that you find throughout the beam, but right now I think it all really works well together and I'm just going to live with it for a while before we replace anything and just see, see how I like it. There's some pretty cool character in this beam, some areas that are sort of notched out. There's one right in front of the doors that open up to the television and you can fit a remote control perfectly in there, which is kind of cool. I am considering replacing the handles on the cabinet itself, maybe for something a little more sleek and uh, just minimal feeling, more like the cabinetry hardware in my kitchen. but. We'll see. For right now, it, it'll it'll do. I just love the way that this beam looks in my living room. It adds so much rustic character. You guys know how much I love English cottage style. And honestly, if you were to go on Pinterest and look up English cottages, I think that one of the things you find over and over again is stone and beams. And to actually have an authentic 100 year old beam in my home. It just feels like a dream come true. I don't think I mentioned it at the beginning of this video uh, I know that I've mentioned it before but we paid $60 for this beam so um, it was Pricey for us, but I don't think it was completely unreasonable. I think it was I think it was fair and I I just can't tell you how much I love looking into our living room or coming down the steps in the morning and seeing this beam in my living room It's just it's so beautiful to me and I think that it adds so much charm in this space and so I would love to know what you guys think. I love how the arch that I added to the fireplace goes so well with the beam and I don't know, there's just this old world charm that I see now in, in this space because of this. 
combination of the stone and, and the wood beam. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I love the way that it turned out. If you guys have any questions or if there's something that I didn't talk about, please feel free to ask in the comments below. If you're new to my channel, please be sure and hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.